Having trained as a, a silversmith and jeweller, I really see the value in handmade pieces as opposed to machine-made pieces. Um, I think that it allows you uh, the opportunity to, to really you know, work with the maker and to really get a piece of art, you know, and it's a wearable piece of art. So I think as opposed to something that is just, you know, I suppose, very repetitive and machine-made, I think with something handmade, you know, there'll always be these slight subtle nuances or features that are different in every piece. It's lovely when you see, you know, everyone's each craftsperson or each maker's unique skills and it, it shines through in their work and I think that they're the elements that can only be seen through handmade pieces. I set up Clare Design because I wanted to create a range of Irish inspired jewellery that was you know, contemporary, ha all handmade and it was quite design led. Um, I suppose I got my inspiration from going to the National Museum and looking at you know, Irish archaeology and, and different I suppose, historic pieces that have been discovered over the years and uh, I suppose a lot of the, the range of Clare Design is inspired by um, you know, early Bronze Age torques and Lunyanas and you know like I suppose, iconic pieces like Tara Brooch and Arda Chalice. I just wanted to take those um, those elements of those those pieces and just put a contemporary twist into them. I've been making jewellery for about 12 years now. I started um, after I left college really. Uh, I studied sculpture in college and I love that and I uh, so there was a small modules part of the course where I could do jewellery and uh, I did that and really really enjoyed it so when I finished my degree um, you know, I wanted to pursue uh, the jewellery side of it. I was lucky enough to get an apprenticeship in Cork where I studied under a silversmith and jeweller and uh, just, you know, working in a, a workshop uh, with four other silversmiths and jewellers and uh, it was brilliant because, you know, there was such a diverse range of work coming in the door. Um, they did everything from, you know, engagement rings and wedding rings to, you know, chalices and tabernacles. So it meant that, you know, whatever landed on your bench, uh, you got to work on, which was an amazing opportunity. And I suppose that's really, uh, you know, from there I was able to develop my skills and, uh, you know, develop my range as well and uh, and also work on commissions and large silver sculptural pieces. And uh, from there, you know, once I developed that, um, I went on and did a master's in design and and that was in, in Cardiff and that was brilliant because it just really allowed me to just work on my, you know, my design signature and, and work on my style. Each piece of jewellery that I make starts uh, with the initial sketches. I take copies of that and I put these copies, you know, just to transfer them onto my sheet of silver. So I have sheets of silver in particular thicknesses depending on the design of the piece that I'm making. And uh, I have my sketch exactly onto my sheet of silver and then I begin cutting these by hand. So I use a, a jeweller's saw which has a very, very thin, fine blade. So it means that I can get a very, very fine level of detail with the piece. And I start cutting that out and you know follow my sketching lines around so that I can get it translated onto metal exactly as it is in the sketches. Uh, from there, I uh, you know, remove the, the the paper sketch and I begin filing the piece uh, with the cutting because it is quite a sharp blade. You do have quite sharp edges, so uh, rather than have those sharp edges as I'm working on the piece, I uh, try and you know file those down and smooth off the the rough edges. And uh, then using emery paper and emery boards, I um, you know give it an extra fine uh, finish. Uh, at this stage, it's uh, ready to you know depending on, on how much work more work. It it needs. Um, often I'll send it for hallmarking at this stage. So the process of hallmarking means that I stamp the piece with my maker's mark. So the maker's mark is made up of my initials which are EM and uh, every maker in Ireland has a different mark. Uh, so I stamp the piece with my maker's mark and then I uh, weigh it and I send it for hallmarking to Dublin Castle. And uh, when it arrives in the ASI office in Dublin Castle, they'll test the piece just to make sure that the it is the quality of, of metal, you know, so that it is sterling silver or it is nine carat or eighteen carat gold. And uh, from here, they'll um, then add the additional marks. So in Ireland, there are three additional marks that you can add. 
So the first mark obviously is the maker's mark, which I've added. Uh, the second mark is the mark of, of the Hibernia. So it's the mark of the Irish Hall Marking Office. Um, and then the third mark is the, um, the quality of the metal. So in the case of uh, sterling silver, it's 925 and that denotes the, the, the amount of silver um, in, the, in, the, in the piece. So with sterling silver, it's made up of 92.5% pure silver um, and the rest is just uh, um, other metals to give it its strength and its malleability. Uh, so it's, you know, better to work with and it's, it's more wearable. The lovely thing about uh, having a hallmarking system in Ireland is that you can trace every piece of jewellery. So if in years to come, you know, someone finds my piece of jewellery or has a piece of jewellery that I've made, uh, through tracing the hallmark, they will know you know, who made it, when they made it, and where they made it. So it's lovely for me to know that in years to come that there will be pieces of my jewellery out there that can be traced right back here to Tata Design in uh, County Cork. The, the hallmarking office that will then send back the pieces to me and then I can work on, you know, the final stages of the piece. So that could be, you know, um, polishing it, uh, adding engraving if it needs to be hand engraved, um, you know, if there's... a uh, so I, any soldering to be done so what I'll often do is send the piece up in parts and get the parts hallmarked and then when it comes back to me I can solder it together in place it very much depends on the piece that I'm making but uh, that usually is the process once it's been polished it then goes into an ultrasonic where it gets cleaned takes off all the compound and residue from the workshop and uh, then it's ready to be boxed in the wooden presentation boxes and uh, shipped to the customer the range of Clara Design Jewellery, it's divide, divided, the collection is divided into four ranges uh, so far. So uh, the first ra range I started with was the Clara range and uh, I suppose the Clara is synonymous with Irish jewellery and Irish design. So I just wanted to put my own little twist or contemporary twist on, you know, what is I suppose a very iconic image. And uh, I started by making the Clara cufflinks and Clara tie pins. And uh, I suppose I started with gents jewellery mostly um, because I found that, you know, for weddings or, or gifts and things like that, there was very little gents or men's jewellery out there. Um, so then from that, I uh, I developed the Clara pendant and, and the cladder ring, which is often worn as wedding rings. The meaning behind the cladder ring is it's made up of three symbols, three elements. There's the, the hands, which represent friendship. Uh, then there's the heart in the centre, which represents love. And then the crown on top represents loyalty. So I suppose the three of them together, um, they're very good for our wedding rings because I suppose they you know, combine everything in a relationship, uh, the love, the loyalty and friendship. And uh, I suppose they're one of the most kind of iconic symbols in Irish jewellery. I'm just going to sign the maker's card, the guarantee card, put them in there. As part of that also, I just included a photo um, of me making the rings so that um, they'll know that they're made by hand and that they have a little memento of their wedding rings being made. As part of Clara Design, uh, I wanted to offer uh, like a custom jewellery service because uh, it's, uh, I suppose, it's a really nice part of the job where you know a customer gives you um, a brief description of what they're looking for or just it could be just something like as simple as a word or an idea and they want a piece of jewellery created uh, around that so it's lovely because you get to work with their ideas and often people are really really um, you know really creative and they just don't have the means of, of making these pieces so you get to make these beautiful designs that are completely one-off. Jewellery is a lovely gift to give uh, Firstly, because it's so personal, and uh, I think to give a piece of jewelry because obviously, when it's, especially when it's made of precious metal like silver or gold, uh, it's timeless. It's going to last forever. It's it's a piece that you can always wear. When you can make it your own and make it unique, uh, then it's even more special. Say hello.